The difference between an information source created for a general adult audience and one created for an audience of experts in the topic is really important. It's also important to know whether you're looking for an information source in your role as a regular person or in your role as a college student and therefore a sort of subject expert in training. Here's an example from Reader's Digest of something meant for a general audience. It's from an article about weight loss tips. This tip suggests eating fat-releasing foods, including dark chocolate. The article doesn't provide any biological or medical explanations. This kind of information source is basically something to keep you from getting bored in a waiting room. It's written for adults who don't know too much about a topic and aren't interested in becoming experts. There will be background information and explanations designed to take you from knowing nothing to knowing a little bit. The information is often incomplete and oversimplified. This article from Discovery News is an example of something that's still meant for a general audience, but it's a much more well-informed general audience. You can see how it provides a lot more detail. They even talk a little bit about the research methods. They mention that it wasn't a randomized trial because they don't want their audience to get too excited and think that the results are conclusive but it doesn't have enough detail about the research methods or the exact findings because that would go over the audience's head. It doesn't provide data or citations because the audience is not interested in those things. So while this article might be interesting to read, it might make you want to research the topic further, it's not a good information source for academic research. What these high-level general audience information sources are good for is helping you stay informed about a wide variety of topics and maybe helping you make decisions in your everyday life. This last example is from a scholarly article. Scholarly articles are always meant for an audience of experts who already know the vocabulary and have a firm understanding of the concepts. The language is full of advanced vocabulary and they dive right into the complicated material without pausing to explain anything. The research methods are described in detail and so is the statistical analysis. There are charts and tables so you can look at the data for yourself, and a references section so you can follow the author's footprints and see how they drew their conclusions. This is the kind of information source that you need for college-level research projects. Whether you need an information source aimed at experts or one aimed at a general audience depends on what you're going to do with it. When I need to fix my plumbing, I don't need a monograph about hydraulic engineering, but I'm also not going to use the clueless homeowner's guide to making your tubes not leak. I need something intended for smart general audiences. I want it simple but not dumbed down. Since I'm just replacing my flapper valve, it's okay for me to pick up an information source meant for a general audience. But when I'm writing a research paper, I need the research methods, the raw data, citations, details, and advanced concepts. Those kinds of things will only be found in information sources that were created for an expert audience.